Endocrine disrupting chemicals are one of the priorities for the work we do in the Health and Environment Alliance because uh, a very simple reason is that they are ubiquitous, they are everywhere in the environment. We are all exposed to them through furniture, through solvents, through pesticides in our food. Um, this is especially an issue of concerns for, for workers who are exposed daily to a coxic cocktail of, of chemicals, endocrine disrupting chemicals. And in fact, the identification and regulation of endocrine disrupting chemicals is probably one of the public health challenges of our times. And why did you reject the proposal uh, from the Commission? What's the reason behind uh, the, this opposition? So we have uh, several problems with the proposal of the European Commission when it comes to identifying endocrine disrupting chemicals. Um, one of them is that there is not a consistent approach across EU regulations. So we have now proposals for identification for pesticides and biocides, but we also have very big loopholes that includes protection of workers, that includes uh, presence of EDCs in food contact materials or toys. Um, and the second problem we have uh, with the definition that was proposed for pesticides and biocides is that the burden of proof that is required to identify a chemical as an endocrine disruptor is way too high. This definition is also problematic because it foresees the exemption of a whole class of chemicals that act as endocrine disruptors and should be identified as such.